we're back now. You're watching continuing coverage of the World Health Care Congress here in Washington, D.C. Thanks so much for joining us and a very special welcome back to our virtual viewers. We're in the studio now with Dr. Neil Evans, Chief Officer, Office of Connected Care of the Veterans Health Administration. Dr. Evans, it's so great to see you again. You as well. Well, last year we did talk a little bit about the work that you're doing in virtual care. Telehealth, for instance, is, is a, a very active segment of the service that you provide. How is that going and where do you think you'll take that service from here? That's a great question. Thanks, Mabel. Um, you know, telehealth is a very important strategy. It's part of our overall strategy for within within VA of how we're able to reach veterans w increasingly where they are or closer to where they are. Um, just to give you a sense um, for what we've been doing in telehealth um, in, in VA, last year more than 700,000 patients received at least a, a portion of their care through telehealth. And we delivered um, 2.1 seven million visits through telehealth, either through video care um, or through store and forward telehealth um, or um, uh, through remote home monitoring for patients in, the, in their home. So it's a very important part of, of how we deliver care. And frankly, in answer to your question about where we're going, uh, um, we're, we're, we're seeing telehealth and, and really connected care technology being more and more integrated into the care delivery experience for all veterans who are receiving care mm -hmm. from, from mm -hmm. us. Is it, are you having that kind of response because sometimes your veterans are in far-flung places and they're having to dial in, if you will, to get care? Right, I mean, certainly, um, certainly uh, our, the geography across which we deliver health care does drive um, some numbers. of our commitment to, uh -huh. to telehealth, right? There are. Um, um, some very rural parts of the country that we uh, need to deliver health care um, to and where we have um, clinics that may be closer to a patient's home but where we aren't where we don't have the specialist at that clinic to deliver care where telehealth can help bring that specialist um, into the, the clinic visit uh, for the patient you know closer to their home so mm -hmm. I do think uh, geography um, drives it but also um, you know, one of the advantages that we have in the VA is that we're a national healthcare system, and telehealth allows us to, to to bring the expertise that exists somewhere within our healthcare system to the patient where they need it, really regardless mm -hmm. of where that patient patient well, lives, even in an urban area. Sure, sure. Uh, may I ask also, other organizations that we've talked with haven't had as much success with that as the VA has. What else do you think is in your system that is really supporting the success of the te telehealth offering? Right. I mean, I think part of it is that we, you know, it's part of our mission to deliver comprehensive end-to-end -end care for the veterans who come to us for their care. Um, and we don't, um, with regard to telehealth, um, delivering that care is something that we have to do so we don't deal with some of the reimbursement challenges um, that are f that, that that are that, that are faced in the private sector, where not all telehealth is 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 a reimbursable uh, clinical event. I think that's part of it. Um, I think the other part of it is is that um, the um, we we've been doing this for more than ten years, and 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 part uh, and it's been a journey to figure out how what who are the staff who need to support delivery of care in our in our clinics. How do we help? Um, veterans under, understand care delivery. How do we train providers to book, deliver care through these these new uh, ways of, of care delivery? And so part of this is it's just been an investment, mm -hmm. and part of it is is that the way our healthcare system is run within the VA it lends itself at this point in time a little bit to, to more to, to being able to deliver care this way. Um, what sort of technology are you using to to support your system? And um, when you are we talking something beyond just speaking on on the com uh, via the computer screen or over the telephone? What else? What does it look like? Right. Um, so, so much of our telehealth. So we'll, we divide our telehealth into three categories okay. as I mentioned. The first is clinical video telehealth, mm -hmm. which is a real-time video connection that is often between a provider at one of our larger medical centers and a patient who is located at one of our um, community clinics uh, closer to their home. Okay. 
Um, that, it, that encounter is usually facilitated by someone we call a telehealth clinical technician who welcomes the patient, gets them set up in front of the camera, and then serves when it's needed as, as really the, the hands of the, of the provider who is at the main medical center. So, you know, we can, we have digital stethoscopes, we can, the provider can listen to the heart and otoscopes and ophthalmoscopes to do a full examination mm -hmm. through telehealth. That's a portion of our, our clinical video telehealth. But increasingly as well, we're now delivering care into the home through an application we call VA Video Connect, which lets veterans, uh, for example, who may be receiving uh, mental health care, um, counseling by a uh, VA psychologist, um, um, or evidence-based psychotherapy by a, by a um, psychologist, to receive that care in their own home um, on their PC, tablet, smartphone, whatever device that they, they, they wish to use, mm -hmm. um, where the provider is located at a VA facility and then delivering that care. Mm -hmm. um, there are also, uh, the other ways we do this is through a device in the home um, or through a mobile application where veterans are able to transmit their own health data back to the VA between visits so that we can uh, maintain a closer relationship and, and help them manage um, chronic illness when mm -hmm. they're at home. You're, you're speaking on a panel um, uh, here at the Congress. What are some takeaways that you're leaving with attendees who are able to see you in person? Right, we, 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 um, I was speaking on a panel about our, um, about our telemental health work mm -hmm. um, and uh, how we've been delivering care um, and, and, and really dealing with helping to manage um, in the context of, 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 of trying to fulfill a, fill a full workforce, how can we use telehealth to expand or extend the, our, our behavioral health workforce? Yeah. And we, 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 um, we've been speaking about how um, telehealth can be a strategy in expanding the workforce. Um, one of the things we've been talking about is our telemental health hub initiative. Over the last um, year, we've uh, stood up 10 hubs in different geographic areas that are able to, where we have full-time mental health staff, psychologists and psychiatrists that are based in these hubs and able to deliver care to parts of the country where we find it harder to hire mental health providers. Right, terrific, Dr. Evans, terrific. Um, we're so glad to have you here again this year. How have you been finding the World Health Care Congress? Oh, it's, uh, it's been a very good meeting. and. Um, it's a great opportunity to meet um, like-minded individuals who are thinking about um, how we can you know, push the American healthcare system forward and, and continue to improve how we deliver uh, healthcare in this country. Great. Thank you, Dr. Evans, for your time. Absolutely. Thank you. And thank you for watching. We'll have a couple more interviews. Stay tuned.